Welcome to today's episode where we delve into the revolution currently unfolding in the world of battery technology. We'll explore the current state of electric vehicle batteries, the workings of vanadium-based flow batteries, and an exciting new development that could transform the automobile industry. The lithium-ion batteries used in electric cars today function based on the movement of lithium ions between positively and negatively charged electrodes or simply, the cathode and the anode. When charging, lithium ions move from the cathode, often made of cobalt, to the anode, frequently comprised of graphite, and a redox reaction occurs. The lithium ions shift from the positively charged cathode, through a liquid electrolyte, to the negatively charged anode. The cathode gets oxidized, and the anode is reduced, or gains electrons, thereby storing energy in the battery. During discharge, the process is reversed. Lithium ions move back from the anode to the cathode, another redox reaction happens, and electricity is fed into the electric motor. This mechanism leads to the charge and discharge of the battery. However, lithium-ion batteries have several issues. Every charge and discharge cycle involves chemical reactions that led to the formation and removal of lithium ions from the structures of the anode and cathode. Over time, this causes chemical changes and degradation, leading to a gradual decrease in capacity. High temperatures speed up these chemical reactions and can cause further degradation, again lowering capacity. Fully charging or discharging the battery can also harm the materials and accelerate degradation. Even a film on the electrolyte can form, hindering the movement of ions in the future. Even under ideal conditions, battery degradation is inevitable. Auto manufacturers use software, heating and cooling systems to effectively manage these issues, and the development of superior battery chemistry will further decrease degradation. However, the precise type of battery installed in your vehicle is uncertain, and there's always a risk of encountering an unsuccessful experiment. We have a good grasp of lithium-ion batteries as the technology becomes more widespread and improves annually. In fact, by 2023, one in every five new cars sold worldwide will be electric. Join us as we keep exploring the future of automobile battery technologies in this fascinating time of rapid innovation. To fully appreciate the revolutionary technology we'll discuss today, let's examine the workings and downsides of lithium-ion batteries and vanadium-based flow batteries. There's another type of battery that few people are aware of, currently used only for stationary energy storage, primarily in wind power generation. These are called flow batteries, sometimes referred to as liquid batteries. Flow batteries consist of two tanks containing liquid in which chemical components are dissolved, known as an electrolyte solution. This electrolyte is passed through a separator, enabling ion exchange without mixing the solutions. The operation principles are similar to those of lithium-ion batteries, except the chemistry differs. For example, consider how vanadium-based flow batteries, like those from the company Schmidt, operate. Vanadium was chosen as it can exist in solution in four different oxidation states, each with different electrochemical properties. The two tanks are filled with a solution of vanadium sulfate dissolved in acid. One tank contains vanadium in an oxidized state, vanadium 5 plus and vanadium 4 plus, and the other in a reduced state, vanadium 3 plus and vanadium 2 plus. During charging, the electrolytes pass through the separator at the battery center. As they pass through the separator, the electrolytes exchange ions. In the redox reaction process, vanadium on one side gets oxidized, loses electrons, while on the other side, it gets reduced, gains electrons. Energy is stored in this process. During discharge, the process is reversed. The redox reaction causes vanadium ions to exchange through the separator in the opposite direction, generating an electric current that can power a device. Vanadium flow batteries have several advantages over regular batteries. First, since both electrolytes are vanadium-based, there's no risk of cross-contamination. Second, their capacity can be increased by simply enlarging the tank volume. Third, they have a proven lifespan and can serve for decades without losing their properties. They can be fully discharged and charged without degradation risks, and they're not temperature-sensitive. Fourth, there's no fire hazard. And fifth, the charge can be easily replenished by replacing the liquid with a pre-charged one or they can be charged from an outlet like lithium-ion batteries. This means that this type of battery can be used like a regular battery and safely charged and discharged. Alternatively, you can simply replace the liquid with a charged one, which is similar to refueling a conventional gasoline vehicle. Naturally, if everything were perfect, such batteries would already be in use in cars, and not just as stationary energy storage units. Their main drawback is the low energy density, which is approximately 5 to 10 times lower than that of lithium-ion. Thus flow batteries are currently used only as stationary sources. However, the company Influit Energy has been developing their own flow battery since 2009, 
aiming to combine the best qualities of these two different types of batteries, and they now have something to be proud of. Initially, they conducted a series of experiments with dissolving various solid elements in liquids and then assessed how capable they were of storing energy. As a result of the experiments, a multi-component material with high density was developed. It is reported to be tiny particles of metal oxides, which dissolve in liquid and do not precipitate after prolonged idle time. Subsequently, contracts worth more than $12 million were signed with the USA government and army, which helped to bring the product to a working prototype. Now, the company is ready to scale and enter the commercial market. In the first generation of flow, liquid, an energy density of 350 to 550 watts per liter was achieved. That is, 23% higher than lithium-ion batteries. Meanwhile, production costs are half lower as no expensive rare earth elements are used. Losses during full charging and discharging are just 2%, and unlike lithium-ion batteries, which ignite on contact with air or water, you can use a flow, flow battery to put out fire. When the electrolytes from the two tanks come into contact, the temperature rises only by a few degrees without any danger. The liquid itself is similar in viscosity to engine oil, and 80% of the weight consists of nanoparticles. They claim that such a battery can operate stably at temperatures from minus 40 to 80 degrees Celsius. The technology is already being tested on electric forklifts and in general, it is claimed that the product is ready for commercial use and will completely change the automotive world. There will be a flow battery with high density, where you can easily drain the discharged liquid and immediately fill it with a charged one, that is, refuel your electric car in two minutes. Alternatively, you can charge this battery yourself from a socket, just like a regular electric car. A second generation is also being developed now, where the density will be from 550 to 750 watts per liter. This will allow a Tesla electric car to travel up to 2000 kilometers without recharging. But most importantly, it will allow such a battery to be used in airplanes, as the density approaches 1000 watts per liter. At the same time, it is stated that the cost of the second generation of the flow, flow battery will still be 30% lower than lithium batteries. Such a revolution is happening right before our eyes. I hope you found it interesting and you will like this episode and subscribe to the channel. Also, please comment on what you think about this.